Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're back with some more Donkey Kong. Had to skip an episode, but we're back to it, ready for more. I've got my trusty fellow friend, Odin Spack, and he's gonna be uh, joining us for the ride today. Yeah, today, today I'm just gonna be watching because you're starting off, uh, you're starting off the the gameplay today. That's I right. Sit back and watch. The theme of today is what could possibly go wrong. So. <laughs> We'll see, it'll all be fine. We'll see how it's how it's going. We're have we might have some some glitches here and there, but we're gonna make the best of it. What better way to do it than a an, an underwater level? Which this one's a little different. It's not quite as serene as some of the other Donkey Kong. Oh, there's that. Here's hoping it looks good for you because when I was watching it just now, it was kind of all over the place. It is all over the place. Yeah. It's like it's like stuttering. That seems fine. It should be fine now. It's starting it's to iron itself out a little bit. There it goes. We have uh, full bars. This, this, this is the entire uh, series is going to be just us talking about uh, janky <laughs> Switch Online. That's so. true. Come on, Nintendo, fix yourself. Actually, it's probably not Nintendo's fault. Maybe it's partially Nintendo's oh. fault. Oh, that was good. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to take you back in. So what I was going to say, <laughs> what I was going to say is that uh, this level, unlike some of the other aquatic levels, you got your aquatic ambience track, which is, you know, good old David Weiss stuff coming at you hot. But this one, uh, it's a little bit of a rundown. Having these octopi, octopuses, I don't know. I don't know how you say that. I don't know what the plural is, but uh, they're coming in hot. And Are you saying that this music does not fit the no <laughs> the, yeah, the vibe? I I the entire time that I'm playing this level currently I am full blown panic. So this uh, this beautiful serene aquatic ambience is not fitting at all. No. If you played the second game um, with like the minecart levels in that game, it's more like that. That music should be playing there. Yes. The croc or not croc that's this level. Yes. Uh, what am I thinking? Like Crook's March, I think it's called. Uh-huh. Yeah. That sounds about da -na, right. Da -na, da -na. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. Like, I'm assuming that they were on, like, a shoestring budget when they made this one. And so, like, I get that, like, to an extent, you just working with what you get. I mean, the soundtrack is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But in the same way that they were using bosses, they were using beautiful, calming music that, like, I feel like this is what you'd listen to if you were, like, going to get, like, a massage. Not, like... Having being attacked by uh, <laughs> poisonous underwater creatures, like I don't know. That's just how I think I, of it. You know, they're like it's a water level, so it's got to have the water level theme in it. They're like David Wise, is like I'm not composing you two. Yeah, <laughs> you get one. Yeah, he's like I'm. I'm getting paid in exposure right now. So, yeah. uh, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> my 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 done now. I mean, it's pretty close to the end. There's this is where the the jellyfish gauntlet is. Oh yeah. This is fun. Hopefully this uh, is not our sudden doom. I don't know if we talked about this last time, but David Wise is not the only composer for this. Yeah, for I this don't game. I don't think that we did, but yeah, he's just the one that okay. gets the uh like this map theme right here is combined as composed by Eveline Fisher. Uh -huh. She goes by something else now, but that, that was her name back then. Yeah. And like this is a pretty iconic theme. Like she she composed quite a few songs for this game. The map song is the only one that's coming to mind right now. I think she also composed the the treetop one. Uh huh. Like the, uh, we, we'll probably see that actually in this episode. So, the treetop theme for the treetop world that we uh, remember the name of immediately. We didn't have any trouble with that one. No, not at all. No, there's there's a there's a treetop level in this world. Yeah, I uh, I'm thinking. Oh, I'm not talking about like the forest world, sure, which I'm... I already forgot. Yeah, the. Uh... What is that called? Is it vulture culture? No, that's just the level. No, that's the level. <laughs> that was funny. I'm like forest frenzy. Something, or something. like that. Or is, it, or is that. is that a level? It sounds right. I'll take your word for it. Okay. Honestly, gun to my head, I would trust you. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Uh, I'm not doing it. For fun? So. Oh, well. <laughs> You're just showing... It's like what I like to say when I when I do my Let's Plays is I like to show people what not to do. Yeah. It's for, the, it's for, Should... it's for their health. Shouts to Squawks, he doesn't blind you in this version right. of the game. This is the uh yeah, this is the first introduction to uh the varying utility parrot squawks. He just holds I don't it. know if you're aware of the original version where 
like the flashlight like shines in your face when you flip. Oh yeah. And, like they they removed that. They were like, that's a bad idea. <laughs> like I get what they were going for, but also maybe not a great idea. Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> yeah. That's alright. I just wanted to see. Uh... I just wanted to show everybody what would happen if you do a, a roll jump into <laughs> one of the one of the crushes. Uh, yeah, that's that's not that's not ideal. I honestly think it would be a lot of fun to kind of play a beta version of this game if that's you know to be found anywhere. Because I guarantee that this game, you know, in and of it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot that there's that thing called momentum. Yeah. Whoops. Don't worry, everybody. We have 28 lives for a reason. Yeah, we're fine. We're gonna be doing great. We we might finish this. Uh, we might finish this game sometime this year. Um, not on, not by my own volition. So kudos to Odin Spec for not being completely inept at this game. I died again. Same spot. All right, let's uh, let's. Okay. <laughs> That's a really hard jump. I gotta jump a little faster, a little farther. All right, I have an idea for next time. Harder, better, faster, stronger. I'm just going to jump on the Crusher and use his momentum to get over that. That is a wonderful idea. I wish I would have thought of it. I did actually think of it. I tried, but I forgot that you can't yeah. do that. That's a no-no. That, yeah. There it is. <laughs> That's a, a better idea. That's using your noggin. In a game meant for children, uh, two adults having trouble figuring it out. What else is new? This game, though, like we talked about last time... Um, this is where the kind of the kid gloves come off, but this game starts to get pretty brutal. Um, I would say at this world is where it gets hard. Yeah, this is tough. I don't know if you want to save it. Yeah, we should probably there. do that. I mean, based on like the likelihood of success, you know, lowering every time that I play when it's my turn. Uh, for sure. Absolutely. Let's jump into that. All right, let's tag you in. We're doing great. Here, here's the here's the world theme I was talking about where this was. Also oh, yeah, this is sure. great. This song. This is a fantastic song. Yeah, I mean, I know I know David Wise is kind of like the rare guy, but can't give him all the credit. What'd you say her name was? Elizabeth Fisher? Uh, Eveline. Eveline Fisher. Okay. Yeah. And then also, uh, Oop. <laughs> the the Funky's Flights theme. Oh yeah. Was that was originally supposed to be a Killer Instinct song? That's interesting. And and that's composed by Robin Beanland, I believe. Man, shout out to Robin right. Beanland. I, I I think so. I, I I know like it's definitely it was supposed to be a Killer Instinct song, but I'm pretty sure that is who composed it. Absolutely. I don't think that one was Eveline Fisher, but I don't know. Maybe I'm also just wrong. I'll take you back in again. Thank you. So they're being paid in exposure. I am yeah. only uh, seeing levels by exposure. <laughs> Guys, you know you can just. You go to Wikipedia, you can find out all the same things we're discussing right now. That's yeah. all it takes. It's for so. your health, it's free. Okay, yeah. so I'd like to get rid of you. Yeah, this is this is the Did You Know Gaming episode <laughs> of... Uh, this is uh, one. Fun Facts with Odin Spack. <laughs> I was watching back last night, it got recommended to me, like a co-op I did with one of my friends like, like five, six years ago now, and I was just listening to me talk, I was like... Man, why do I sound so cringy? <laughs> I, I was like, do I sound like this all the time? Like, uh, I get worried when I do stuff like this. Like, do I do I mesh well with others? Oh boy, do I mesh well with D Mike? I don't know. <laughs> Odin, you and I are like peanut butter and bananas. I'm telling you what. It's I a, get it, cause DK, right? A delicious, yeah. See, that was good. I say uh, it's a delicious combo. I almost said pickles on accident, and I realized that's not a thing. And if it is, shame on you. I, I mean, I wouldn't know, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I've ever had... I'm not a big peanut butter guy, but I don't think that my first instinct when having a uh, a delicious nutty treat is to put pickles on it, but I guess maybe the the meshing of flavors is good for you. Who knows? I, don't know. I am a big peanut butter guy. <laughs> hey, well, you would know best. Do you, put, think, do, you, but... do you put bananas on your peanut butter? No, I don't. Okay. That's fair. Is but it, I, I think it's just for a lack of trying. Maybe I will next time. Yeah, you could do the, uh, what is it? The uh, the Elvis special. I think he did like peanut butter, bananas, and like bacon. Something like that. Uh, I don't know about that. That seems like too much at that point. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you you're... ruin a good thing. That's why people just like pepperoni pizza, you know? That's true. I am a big, uh, I'm a classic pep kind of guy. 
I will experiment though. I And I will say this, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this out there into the world. I don't think there's anything wrong with pineapple on your pizza. Would I do it? I don't know, but <laughs> you know. You just, you just don't think there's anything wrong with it. Sure, I'm a bit of a centrist when it comes to pizza. Enjoy it however you want. All right, I don't care about this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that that's such a polarizing, like kind of a joke thing to to talk about, I guess, is like the pineapple on pizza thing. I know that some people get kind of like, I don't want to say militant about it. Maybe they do. Oh boy. I don't know. It, it's it's like the thing to joke about, I guess. And people just like, oh, let's, uh -huh, you know, that's the joke. <laughs> I do. Uh, I, I, I don't know why pineapple. I don't know why that's such a divisive thing. I'm going to tag you in. I think it's just because, um, well, <laughs> I forgot that that's how this one goes. Um, I think the reality of it is that it's not so polarizing that it's going to like hurt anyone's feelings, hopefully, but it's just divisive enough that it could be like a conversation starter. But then you know that pineapple on pizza is just, is the gateway drug to arguing about more dumb stuff that's like more aggressive. Like, how do you feel about, um, ooh, this is gonna, I, well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna rescind my comment because I don't want to make this conversation more divisive. So, we'll just stay with pineapple on pizza being okay. All right, all right. I I mean I don't know if like people just love to argue about stuff. I feel like, but I think I don't think there's anything wrong with necessarily arguing about everything. But sometimes it's kind of dumb. For sure. Um, I want to give shout outs to this song by the way because this song rocks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is probably my favorite song in the game. Let's uh let's give it a moment and let it breathe. Yeah, as we ruin it. By as we ruin it. <laughs> Let's let it breathe as we don't let it breathe. That's good. That's fine. I really like this song. I hope a lot. It's... I already know how bad I've been doing at this game that, like, every time that you're doing something where I think that you're going to die, I, for some reason, like, have this muscle memory that it's me, and, like, I clench real hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, you want to see... Uh... The, the the dirtiest secret in the game. Let's do it. I don't know if you're familiar with this. I don't think I've seen this, no. Okay. Uh, you actually need to do this, okay? So, what I need you to do okay. is I need you to hold the barrel. Okay. And then you need to jump at the wall. Like, just... no, you didn't jump at it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you have to jump at it, because then you, then you enter another bonus oh, area. Oh, I there. see. Okay, so you said jump, and what I did was the opposite of what you said. You 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 did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you did I, the uh, the non jump. I'm gonna need you to jump at this wall. <laughs> so what my brain decided to interpret that is is uh, everything Odin says is insane. So I'm not gonna do that. It's kind of a cool bonus room though because uh, you get like a bunch of one ups in it. And that would be cool like... and pretty useful for a, uh, a let's play of people who have not died once. So yeah. Yeah, we don't really need the one-ups, right, really. So. We're doing great. We're just powering through this bad boy, which is probably not going to be the case because things, like we just discussed multiple times, are going to be, get, be getting exponentially more difficult here. Some of the um, future levels, especially like the auto-scrollers, those ones are pretty brutal, so. Also, I have no idea how you're supposed to know Rambies down there. Yeah, how would you know? I didn't even know that was down there. I, I don't know. Like, because it just looks like a pit, but I, I don't know. It's like, hey, have you tried maybe, to... Maybe there's a clue. I, just muscle memory is how I remember. Have but... you tried to sacrifice yourself today for Donkey Kong Country? <laughs> like, just check every pit. Yeah. You know, oh, wow. and this is back in the day pre-save state. Not that one. So, I mean, like, when this game came out, it was just kind of like a trial and error. But, you know, how many lives would you have had at this point in the game? Who knows? Would you have had 29? I, when I originally played this game, I was bad. And sure, I mean, sure. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not great. I can beat this game. I'm not saying I'm fantastic or anything, but um, I remember having to use like the, the, the 50 lives cheat. Oh, so, for sure. To get through the game. Like I just, I couldn't get through it. The classic game genie. Yeah, well. I don't know if we, we may have also talked about this, but that guy takes two hits in the Japanese version for some reason. Wow. And it's really weird because I don't think there's like any enemy in this game that takes two hits. Like the armadillo guys kind of do, but they don't because they eventually just stop rolling on their own. 
So it's just very odd that there's an enemy that you jump on and they don't die. Yeah, I mean, that's counterintuitive I, since the rest of the game doesn't behave like that. So you'd that would probably cause us a lot of trouble. Yeah, it is. It's very confusing because I, I haven't even seen like I, I, I've been meaning to play through the Japanese version because I, I don't know if you know this, but you can just download the Super Famicom <gasps> online. You what? Know? Like you just need like a Japanese account. OK, like, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, like it's really easy to do. Oh, and, for a uh, second, I thought you were advocating for uh, illegal shenanigans. No, no I, I'm nothing illegal about it at all, actually. <laughs> That's true, yeah. There's actually a, um, I don't know what channel it is, so I would give him a shout out if I knew, but there's a guy who, uh, well, there's that. Um, he did that to show off some of the uh, Super Famicom music with some of the Japanese games that we don't get here, which I think is really cool. So kudos for that. Yeah, like Zelda 2 has like a completely different soundtrack. Uh -huh. It sure does. It's like really weird. Different sprites. Yeah, he, he's a guy that does, uh, he does sprite comparisons. That's what his channel is basically about. So that's cool. Okay. All right. So at least, you know, with the disproportionate level success rate, as we're seeing, you know, 19 to 8, not a big deal or anything. Um, nah. At the very least, uh, I feel like I'm contributing. You are. This is not just a group project where I'm sitting back, picking my nose. I mean, I might I be picking, I might be, here. I might be picking my nose. You don't know that, but. <laughs> I have sinus issues, leave me alone. I think we actually just passed by a secret there, which I'm not sure how you're supposed to know. One, one of these where you just like fall underneath this thing. I don't know, it's really dumb. There's so many dumb secrets in this game. Yeah, this game's got more Easter eggs than an Easter egg hunt. That See, I don't really have any, I didn't have anything queued up as like a funnier way to reference. Like what else has Easter eggs besides Easter? I don't know. That's all I got. It's, it's weird because it's, it's kind of not an Easter egg, though. True. Because, it, it you know, it, go, it goes towards that 101%. Yeah, I mean, it was intended, right? I gotta say, like, the fact that it's 101%, I think this is the first game to ever do that. Um, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> because imagine, like, getting 100% on your file and be like, oh, I'm done with the game. I did it. And they're like, hey. Like, and then it's like, you're not actually done with the game. It's like, no, it's 101%. It's like some like schoolyard rumor, like, guys, you can get 101%. Mm -hmm. done with the I mean, if you get to 100 and you didn't know that, you might be done with the game. You're like, this is ridiculous. I'm fed up with this. Yeah, I think it's right here. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong. I guess I'm okay. wrong. I, there's something like that where you just like kind of jump there and there's a barrel. Well, I mean, I you're more than welcome to try it 26 more times, but... No, I don't know if good. People, I don't know if the people <laughs> watching this video would enjoy that too much. I don't want to hold people back. Maybe they're really into like a uh, little masochism, but we'll hold off on we that. We haven't really been trying to find all the secrets anyway. I don't know why I'm trying this. True. I mean, we'll I, be... I enjoy that when this goes up and down, like the partner character just kind of sliding up and down with it. I like the kind of canned, uh, like running in place animations <laughs> they have. Sometimes not even like being on the platform itself. Oh, come on. You gotta, you gotta jump. I'm getting goosed. Well, I, I moved. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. Jump. I was trying to jump. I jumped in my oh, head. Shoot. Ah. <laughs> now you don't gotta jump. No, I'm dead. That's okay. We're doing great. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is going to be like 15 minutes of solid progress and then just 10 minutes of this level. That's it. Yeah. I don't know how long these are supposed to be, so... Uh, I'm trying to cap them around like 30-ish minutes just because this game um, is relatively short, so I figure we could probably power through this one. Hopefully not in too many episodes. Yeah, we're in the second last world. Yeah, we're so. doing great. We'll see how many attempts it takes us to beat the final boss. I don't recall the last world being terrible compared to this world. Yeah, this one, this one's pretty brutal. But that being said, there are like, I think there's like one or two bad levels in the final world. Yeah. Especially the last level. One of the most disappointing things I think about, I think it's this world is the, uh, or maybe it's the, the one after it is the, the second insertion of the minecart levels, which I think are really fun. But that the second minecart level is substantially easier than the first one. So for sure, they should have just been switched. Strange. But going back to what you said, um, good old like playground rumors, you know, everybody had those as a kid when you'd be, how on earth do you get to that? This was a roll. Okay, gotcha. 
That would make sense. You're supposed to do basic things that I'm incapable of doing. Um, so yeah, Playground Rumors, you remember that as a kid. Uh, at least, you know, we're talking like mid to late 90s, going around, talking... I mean, the things that I remember was kind of in, in a, a hot topic back in the day was uh, Pokemon rumors. I remember those kind of being... Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I was just about to say that. Like, yeah, that's that's all the rumors at my school. The uh, the old gotta push the truck to get Mew shenanigans, stuff like that. Can't get that. We never had that one, but I remember one we had was was Bill's Secret Garden. Oh, yeah? Was that a thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had to have you had to have certain Pokemon in your in your party, and then you had to talk to Bill, and you could go behind his house. Because it looked like you could go behind his house, so that's why people like... What am I doing? Oh my god. Good old Bill. Yeah, there was uh there was that. I remember it was after probably the um I wanna say I don't know I don't think Meryl. So I didn't mean to bury your truck. You're good. I, I just know I know that one gets talked about a lot, but I, sorry. I don't yeah, that one's kinda of, that one's the very stereotypical one. I don't know if Meryl was introduced in the first movie or the second, left in like a like a little the little Pikachu movies, but I do remember um you know, prior to Merrill having the name, his namesake, he was, people were going off on this, uh, who's this like Pikachu clone, this Pika Blue thing. And you could like, if you beat the, the elite Four 700 times and <laughs> with, with a level one team and all this stuff, then you could unlock Pika Blue, like those, uh, Poke Gods. That was a thing for a while. I think Pika Blue is its Japanese name though. Oh, is it? That's awesome. I hope it is. I think so. I think that's the that's that's why people thought like, oh my god, Pika Blue. It's like an evolution of uh, like a yeah. secret Pikachu form. Yeah. Which is funny though too. I think it was in Pikachu's vacation. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Mer Meryl was in? Maybe? Am I wrong? I yeah. Don't know. I actually had a conversation about that with some friends the other day about how um, you know, as a kid, uh, no slight on those early Pokemon movies, they were what they were. Um, you know, you're a little kid, every, everything Pokemon related when you're a kid is gonna be, you know, A plus quality. But I remember um, how it, how exciting and new it was at the time because they introduced a couple of new Pokemon in those movies from uh, the gold and silver generation. I remember uh, early on in the first movie, Ash is fighting that pirate and he has a Don fan. And I remember how kind of a big deal that was thinking like, oh, oh what is yeah, this? right. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, there was Don Fan. Obviously, Togepi was part of the, the anime for a while, just the regular cartoon. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That was nuts. How was I supposed to do anything about that? That was good. You know, you just have yeah. to, you just have to instinctively know where the ground is and that there's going to be a, uh, a winged creature trying to ruin your day. Let's see if I can not make the same mistake. I'm just going to drop in. A little self-preservation, rare from me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I went. I recently went back. Did you know, like Netflix, they put out like a a new version of the of Mewtwo Strikes Back. Yeah, wasn't well, it? It's like a. Is it pre-rendered or like it looks kind of like yeah. the animation is different? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's just that version or that, but I was like, man, this movie kind of blows. <laughs> yeah, I heard they didn't do it justice. <laughs> but no, like I'm just thinking, like I can't imagine the story is that different. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just bad. Yeah, aren't there? There was supposed to be a sequel to that first movie, too. Like, I don't know if it's like an extended anime episode or what, but I remember hearing that there's... It's a sequel to an anime episode. I remember that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, God. Ooh. <laughs> Things are getting a little, uh... A little nutty. Um, I really did, like, Pokemon 2000, though, like the sequel. Oh, like, yeah. I really liked that one. That one was fun. I remember there's a there's an entire like did you know gaming about the dude who invented Lugia, which I think is incredible. That entire story is like very interesting, pretty heartbreaking. Um, Cause like that there's was like a story about like like one person made Lugia. Yeah, like that was his entire like namesake was was developing that character for Nintendo, and there was supposed Weird. to be like more fanfare about it. Apparently, oh. oh great. Apparently that that guy's life was so dedicated to it that he had like severe alcoholism and he would use, he would like tap into his creativity for Lugia as a way to like be like a relief, a release from that, you know, to like kind of get away from when he was having like withdrawal and stuff. He would just try to like, he would like think about Lugia and like do Lugia things. I don't know how intense this gets for this guy, but yeah. So is the character in that movie who's trying to get Lugia? Is that like who that's inspired on? I don't know. 
And I'm trying to remember what it was. Here. I was I was trying to think about I think like he was talking about in in the episode about how um you know Lugia was supposed to be like this maternal figure and I guess like they made Oh, I did the same thing again. I'm I'm doing great. My muscle memory is like a goldfish. Um <laughs> Yeah, it was supposed to be like maternal and like all of these things and then like Nintendo was like how about we don't do that? And I guess like the guy's vision for the for the character was like ultimately like completely altered by Nintendo and it like really crushed him. Which makes sense. I mean, like it's like his brainchild. There's an episode of the anime with Lugia and it's like a mother to like a baby Lugia. Yeah, that's, I was going to say. So, so, so a there baby? is. A th yeah. So there is like kind of that in it. Just not in the movie. It was right. just an anime episode. I remember that. Was the was the second movie the one where you got the ancient Mew card? Was that when they gave those out? Yeah, because that was like a... <laughs> I, I, it's a plot point, quotation marks, in the second movie. Right. It's in it. That's that's the extent. It's in it. Yeah. That, it's not a plot point. That, that movie in and of itself felt very meta, which was very strange. Like, there... It, it just felt like a... I don't know, like like they're trying to incorporate too much of like the real world elements of what Pokemon is, like Pokemon cards in a Pokemon movie where there's like actual Pokemon to these people in this universe. It's very strange. Right. Oh boy. I just want to go over this guy. There we go. You can do that too. I'm just over here surviving. Okay. Is there? Oh wait, there's a DK barrel down there. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. Here we go. You know, for a level that's all about elevator antics, it's just been rope so far. Yeah, like what's the uh, what's the deal with that? What's the deal with airline food? <laughs> they just decided, you know what, ropes. This is it. people think, oh, they meant ropes by elevators. Yeah, I mean, like back in the day, like isn't that? I don't know. I don't know if I have a joke about elevators. That would be really uh, really strange. Like, hey, like, hey, Odin, how do you feel about this queued up joke about elevators that I have? You might question our friendship a little bit. Yeah, I might take offense to some elevator joke. <laughs> my dad was an elevator. Our, uh, my sense of humor sometimes doesn't go all the way up to the top floor, you know? <laughs> now look at this, the second half of the level, like, oh, elevators. There they are. Makes you feel like you're back in, uh, an old Mario 1. Yeah. Maybe they I just want to, uh, they just want to ease you in, that. ease you into the elevators. Yeah, exactly. I have this capture software off to the side just so I can hear the game, and it is so behind. <laughs> like, <laughs> unbelievably behind. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I have no idea if... Um, I don't know why I'm even listening to it at this point. I mean, you can still appreciate it from, like, a... Uh, like, hey, like, it's trying standpoint, you know? Man, I can't remember the last time I've heard this song go this long. Oh yeah, I don't think I've actually ever listened to that. I thought it just looped at, at this like part with like the, <laughs> the xylophone or marimba, whatever that is. It's interesting. Yeah, that was fun, there you go. Hey. A little bit of a... Uh... We did it. I am floating above you, that's great. Casual. Oh god, uh oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I knew this was gonna be bad. <laughs> oh well. Sometimes you just got to go for the Hail Mary. Yeah. So hopefully if we can finish this level, we can call it a... Oop. <laughs> we can call it a day, maybe. How many lives did we start this off with? Like 26? Yeah, we were in the high uh, 20s. Yeah, we are uh, not doing as well. I think we got up to 29 at one point, so... It's all about trial and error. Emphasis on uh, error. Yeah, those oh, okay, uh, sure. those Pokemon movies were uh, were a blast as a kid. I don't think I ever went to go see one in a theater, but um, that was back in the good old VHS days. I remember, you know, you rent it from the old Blockbuster and you catch a flick with your your friend and his family over some pizza rolls. Um, I'm trying to think if I saw the second one in theaters. I know I for sure saw. No, I had to have. No, I did. I saw the first three in theaters. My my brother worked at the movie theater, so there you go. You know, we'd get we'd get the he'd get us all the cards too. Yeah, we gave them away. So. See, that's that's like the that's the clutch connection, which is like almost as good as having an uncle who works at Nintendo. Yeah, it was close enough. You know, 
Ooh. We're gonna wait here. This game is, it, it is glitching out a little bit. So hopefully it's, it? yeah, it was it was starting to stutter. It was basically turning into a bit of a PowerPoint. I don't like this timing at all. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of antics. I think you can go down here and there's a secret. Look at that. <laughs> Maybe it'll get us an extra life if there's one in here. <laughs> I remember I once gonna, when I was a kid, I, uh, you know, I lived in a pretty, quiet suburban neighborhood grown up and I had gone down the street like maybe three or four houses to go and watch one of those Pokemon movies and I had apparently forgotten to tell my mom where I was going and I thought that she was going to put out like an Amber Alert. She's like freaking out. This is before like cell phones are really a thing and she's like all over like trying to figure out where I'm at and then I come outside. I'm like having the time of my life. I had just watched the second Pokemon movie with my friend and my mom was like about to like rip my head off. Like I'm I'm walking down the street like pure smiles. You know, I'm gallivanting around. And uh it is what it is. I I'm, I had as much fun then as I'm having now with, you know, with my boy Odin, so that's yes, how we're going to do it. It's been a blast. Yes, we should wrap it up here, right? If we will do that. So everybody, thanks for watching. This has been Super Nintendo Sundays. I've been D Mike. And I've been Odin. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.